Hey, welcome back. Woodley here. We got a winter storm going on. We're working inside. In today's video, I'm going to be building insulation boxes for our in ceiling speakers. We're entering an exciting phase where the sheetrock is going on. We've got that getting delivered tomorrow. And I've been working on taking care of some of these projects that we have um, up inside the ceiling and in the walls so that things can get ready for that sheetrock. So let me show you this um, in ceiling speaker project that I have. I have a template and uh, then we have some work to get done. Now for our layout, we're gonna, I'm gonna kind of draw this for you here. The wall that we're gonna have our television on is on here. And what I found online is that when you have a 5.1 um, surround sound system, if you're doing in ceiling speakers, what you wanna do is in this line, you wanna have three speakers. And then kind of back here where your couch is, you put your two surrounds um, in it on this way. And so this, like if, if thinking if this is your couch, then this is where you would position those speakers approximately. So I am certainly not an expert and I didn't do a deep, deep dive on this. I'm not trying to be like an audiophile about this. I'm just trying to get something that is better quality for an affordable price and a little bit of work and so uh, that's kind of the layout that i had chosen so let's go and start to look at the other components of that so the first thing that i had to do before our spray foam insulation got in was i needed to add one of these low voltage um, boxes and run the wiring up in the wall because that wiring as you can see was going to get um, encased my uh, gimbal here keeps keeps uh, going out on me but that um, wiring was going to get largely encased in this spray foam here and so what, what we have going on here this will be the the tv wall you're going to notice up here at the top this orange box on the left that is a cat 6 wire that will enable us to plug in if we have a tv we can plug that directly into the ethernet or uh, the internet and then right next to it is another box, and that box will have a brush plate on it, and this will allow us to pull HDMI cables up through the wall cavity. Down here, we have uh, two HDMI cables, or excuse me, two uh, Cat6 cables. That's so if we have like a game system um, or some type of media device that we want to put in, we can, uh, we can direct wire those things. Uh, over here, we have a double to the right, we have a double box. The reason we have a double box is because we have five, actually we have six speaker wires coming out. I'll, I'll show you the six later, what that's for. And then the five that I had just talked about with that diagram. And then to the right of that, we're gonna be able to pull um, those HDMI cables up through that wall cavity we'll run some fish tape up through that so we can get into this. Now, what I, what I created here is the way that these, our speakers work, they have a nine inch diameter and uh, they don't need any uh, bracing. They just, they go right into the sheetrock. So what I wanted to do was create kind of a sound uh, isolation setup so that we could Put the speaker up in here and not have all that sound travel up to our bedroom floor which is right above here so what i've done very simply is i've put in uh, a two by four across i made sure that it was elevated a little bit so it won't interfere at all with our sheetrock and then i just built a box here out of osb and i've got some rock wool comfort bat insulation cut in here and then drill the hole through to bring our wire into this box and so this is kind of my prototype I wanted to make sure that it was going to work and uh, then I can show you here a little bit it, it does work we'll show you a little bit more about how we're going to do these other ones the six wire that I mentioned to you earlier is we decided to run a wire over here for this is our in our kitchen um, we can put a speaker in here and if we want to wire that in we'll be able to do that that'll kind of be um, the sink is right here, so it'll be right around the sink, and then the stove will be right over here on this wall. 
Uh, the reason I ended up doing that was because I didn't order enough wire initially and I had to run to Lowe's and get more wire for the last speaker. And when I got it, they only had a hundred foot and I was like, why, why wouldn't I run one over here so we could throw another speaker in here um, at a future time. So that's what the sixth one is for. So here is the cut list that we're gonna need to make to make these. Um, I've got 23 inch by eight inch. We're gonna need eight of those. Uh, and then I notch out on the sides three and a half those. That's so that the box can kind of sit down on the two by fours that come across. We're gonna need uh, 16 by six and a half. We're gonna need eight of those. Uh, 23 by 16, we're gonna need four of those. Those will be the top of the boxes. Then um, two by twos, uh, those, when I build the box, I just have two by twos for the corner that allows me to screw it in because that OSB doesn't have much strength in it. So you, you can't really screw OSB to OSB and expect it to maintain itself. So we got to get um, 16 of those and then two by fours going across to hold them up. Uh, I've got 20 and a half heavy, so just a little bit over on that. Um, and we're going to do 10 of those because we have five speakers. Now, I do have a bonus one. One of the speakers, some of the ductwork that is in there isn't going to allow me to build the full size enclosure. So I'm going to have to get a little creative in figuring that out. So I wanted to make sure that I had enough materials. Um, when I stopped at uh, Lowe's on the way up here, I bought three eight foot two by fours. And here's what I have left. I got a 54 and a half inch and then two eight footers. That will give me 10, those 10 that I need at 10 and a half inches. Two by twos, uh, I, have, I have plenty for those. I got three of those, they're 96 inches. I can get 14 out of one at six and a half inches. So no issue with that. And then here's kind of the leftover uh, OSB sheets that I have from the first one that I cut up. Uh, at Lowe's, I had them cut them into four by four um, pieces for me. And so I just kind of drew out a map here of how to efficiently use this. And with one of those four by fours, I'm going to be able to get most of my cutouts that I need um, for the sides of the box, leaving me plenty of space to get those remaining uh, tops of the box. So I'm pretty confident that uh, I'll have plenty of OSB to get this job done. All right, so now we've got the cut list and let's get cracking on getting this thing put together.
finished product that we have. And uh, you can see I'm going to put these two by fours in between the floor joists that we have. The, I notched these out so that they'll sit on them. And just to make sure that this doesn't uh, interfere with any of the drywall, when I put these in, I'm going to kind of elevate them a little bit so they're not exactly flush with the ceiling, um, just a little bit of elevation. And see if I can flip this up to show you the inside. So inside, I, I just use those two by twos in the corner there to um, provide some a place to screw into. And we've got the top on, and that'll be a nice box that will have that uh, rock wool insulation will go on the top and then on the sides, and we should be good to go. So let's get uh, working on that part of it. be asking yourself why in ceiling speakers and a number of years ago I had come across a uh, stereo receiver and I was able to set that up with my television through one of the digital um, output cables and it was like night and day the difference we like to listen to a lot of music and just changed my whole perspective on what it feels like to listen to things when you have good speakers versus the really subpar speakers that come in uh, most television sets. So that became something that we've had for a long time. And in the new house, originally I wasn't going to um, do that. And then as we got into this phase, I got looking at the cost of a set of in-ceiling speakers. I came across this pair of speakers on Amazon for $150 and I was like, that is um, not a whole lot of money for something that I think would really benefit us, then we wouldn't have to have um, speakers out anywhere else. And it seemed like it would be worth it, and now was the time to do it. So here's a look at the finish. This is uh, one of the rear speakers in the living room, that box. Here is the um, other rear one. And then we have our center one up here. We have our front left on that window. The kind of to be determined one has been framed out right there by those two by fours. But uh, I can't, I didn't have the space to get a box up in here, but I've, I've kind of started something here with uh, getting some rock wool around it. Uh, the reason I haven't kind of completed that is I'm just waiting to hear back uh, from 
our contractor about running rock wool underneath all of these drain lines just to dampen that sound a little bit there. And uh, we've been air testing the, ho um, the PEX lines and I just wanna make sure that we're clear, everything is good on that so I don't, uh, I don't put something in a place that they gotta yank it back out um, for there. And then our final one, the kitchen one, we've got up uh, over here. And I actually ended up moving this one over from where I originally had planned to put it. And I don't, I just, that's where I ended up putting it. So um, those are the finished boxes. So that'll wrap up this one. As you can see, we've got a lot of insulation going on. I've been working upstairs on uh, putting in fiberglass insulation in between the rooms uh, to help with the sound for the bedrooms. But uh, let me know what you think about this. If you have any experience in this area, uh, suggestions, things that uh, you would have done. Um, I like learning and I'm a novice, so feel free to share away. Have a good one. See you next time.